In this video, let's create this kind of a pattern, rhombus pattern inside Houdini. So for me, the necessity came when I'm making this soldering station tutorial. And for this knob, you can see there is a this kind of pattern on a knob. So let's just quickly create this kind of detail. Hope you learned something. Let's get to it. For us to create this kind of detail, all we have to do is set up our pattern. Then we can just duplicate them and create it procedurally. So first of all, let's put down the grid. So in my grid, what I'll do is make sure it's one by one. Doesn't really matter. And then in the rows, let's make it four and four. And for the size, with let's make one size zero. So let's let's copy channel reference, paste inside, and let's divide it by two like that. So basically now what we have is half of the, now that we, well, let's take a look. So now that we have this kind of setup, what we can do is just select all of the points and bevel them like that. Make sure that in loops individually like that. Now select all of it and fuse them together so that there isn't any duplicating points. You can see it searches one point. Now what we can do is so let's select all of it and let's start beveling it. So for the bevel, maybe something like this. And now what we'll do is extrude only these shapes. So first of all, let's go to this poly bevel and on the output groups, let's select output, let's output group point fillet edge. Not the edge, but po all the polygon groups that it creates. So this, so there are two groups, uh, it's going to be two polygon groups that it creates. Let's select this. And now let's go back in here and let's put down the extrude node. Now in poly extrude, what we have to do is actually just extrude these big parts. So what we can do is actually select every polygon except for these two groups that we just created. So in a poly extrude, in a group we can write simple expression. So put down asterisk, space, then carrot, question mark, and asterisk. So this is basically saying give me everything except for any polygons that has a group in it so we know that we have groups for these two groups in, from poly bevel these and these are basically groups that we have we're saying basically give me everything except for those two groups and then we can just extrude them like that now that we have this basic setup you can take a look at and we see exactly where we want to cut our geometry so i want this put down a selectable template and go inside wireframe you can see that over our new pattern in our very first view that we just created there are very obvious marks where we want to cut our geometry for the tiling so let's do that and also let's do it procedurally so that once we change the dimension of this grid it's still going to work with the so we can change a little bit of this these shapes dimensions and it's still work and it won't break so let's do that first of all let's match our geometry to the positive grid of x and z so put down a match size node and this in this x put down on min and z put down min and for just about y that doesn't matter for us let's just put it like that now let's create our cut line so put down a clip Let's go inside here. So first of all, let's clip it in uh, on the X. So let's rotate it. Hold down Alt, Control, and then just move it in a 45 degrees intervals. And now we have to align our this geometry. So how can we know where we want to put it down? So we could do it manually. Let's say I know I want it in here, but obviously it's not going to be very precise. So let's go back to our grid and let's copy our size X relative reference for me shift c let's go back to the clip paste inside here so now we have reference to our channel you can see it's a one but now we know that our grid is basically made of three lines now that we know that we want to cut it in here so basically we have to divide it in three and then multiply by two let's go inside here let's divide it by three now we have third of this geometry let's Put it all in a bracket and then multiply it by two like that. Now we have a perfect cut right where we want it to be. Now for the next one, let's uh, duplicate this clip, connect it to the next one. So 
all we really have to do is change the direction so just take this change direction and now instead of multiplying by 2 we just delete this one and that's it so now we're basically dividing the original shape by 3 we're getting this cut which is gonna give us perfect symmetry so now let's cut off top and bottom duplicate it now we have to reference the other axis so this is this was the x now I want to, want to reference the y axis so let's go back in here and we do basically the same operation so only with the y so what I'm going to do is take this copy it then I control click on this one and make it not anymore as a reference and then just click on this one to control and middle click on origin to make it zero and paste it actually let's duplicate it for the next one also so we don't have to delete it next time then on a on the x-axis so so this is x on now on z x y and z this one pasted and only thing only thing that we have to change is the size x instead of x it's going to be y like that and now let's change the clip direction so now we want to clip on a on a z direction like that so now we have the top of it so basically this is the we are dividing it so 0 0.5 divided by 3 like that and now copy this one copy connect it to this clip let's move this clip to the part we want to clip so I want to clip from the bottom so move it again like that and now just paste it inside here and now we want to multiply it by 2 like that now you can see we have a perfect cutout for our geometry then now we can duplicate with the copy node and get the, our pattern. So first of all, now that we have our clips set up, let's put down a match size. In match size, let's make sure that it's at minimum at the X and Y, so it's positive on the X and Z axis, like that. And now let's start duplicating. Just select it and put down duplicate node. So for us to make sure that we have perfect match for these edges, all you have to do is do a simple function. So in, inside here, we have to write in bounding box, and in bounding box, press zero, and then we want to basically get the bounding box of our object. So imagine this for every object, there's basically a bounding box around it. What we want to do is get the since it's a perfect square, we want to get the bounding box of O C and X. So in a Houdini help, you press on this and go to the help open up the help page you see we get the type can be with d min max and face we want to get the maximum value of our bounding box in a so let's copy start with the z so we want to z maximum z so d so this is x so this is z d z max just copy it and paste inside here and that's it see now we're getting a perfect match so this is basically the z direction, the offset for the, our copy. And now once we start copying, we can get however many copies you want. Now just copy it again, connect it inside here. All we have to do is copy this one. Let's put it back to zero inside here. And now we want to copy it on x axis. Paste it inside here and all we want is from the z, change it to x like that. Now we have a bounding box of our x and you can see we are creating this kind of a pattern and make sure that and let's make sure we have fused them together just select all of the points and put down a fuse node like that now to make sure that it's one object just double click on it make sure that it's always gonna select the whole object and what's cool about this you can always go back to the our extrudes and change the parameters in there so we want to change the bigger distance between all of these shapes you can just go back to the poly bubble like that and then in the poly extrude you can also change the distance how high it is like that so this you're gonna have to work with the with the normals and you can change maybe something like that so there's not much of a bevel between them like that and if the normals we can put down a normal at the end of it so and now let's create it as a cylinder so in this just put down bend tool in Bend tool, press enter and enter it and press B to recapture the region like that. And now just bend it 
negative 360 like that and after that let's make sure that we are fused them together like that and now let's make a caps for these ends just select the ends like that and put down the poly extrudes press F and just scale them in like that after selecting these create a circle from it like that now you can either cap it or bridge them together. So let's bridge. So select one end, poly bridge, select the other one, press enter like that. That's it. You can also maybe even bevel these ends. Now let's make sure that our bend always works as it, it needs to be because let's say we want more copies, we want more resolution for these and we want more copies of these shape and how can we make sure that our bend follows our shape so first of all all we have to do is quick uh, set up a quick reference go to copy one and copy reference of this translate and paste inside the bend capture length so you can see that our capture length is now exactly one exactly one this shapes basically thickness all we have to do is, since we are copying from copy node, we have to reference also this total number reference channel. So it is NCY, and go here and multiply by CH in brackets dot dot slash. We know that it's inside copy 2, copy 2, and then NCY, like that. And that's it. Now if we take a look at our capture length, You can see it's always going to follow the number amount. So let's put down 360 degrees. Okay, negative. So our normals are correctly. And now let's go back to copy two. And let's start, let's say, more copies. You can see that our band is following exactly. And we're getting perfect tube-like shape. And for the other copy, it doesn't really matter since band works only in one direction. Something like this. We can get more of them or less like that and that's it for this tutorial see you next time and take care